when a person uses the term old covenant, are we talking about all of the covenants that are in the Old Testament? Are we talking about the Abrahamic, the Mosaic, and the Davidic covenant, and the Noahic covenant? In other words, can God now flood the entire earth? Because, In other words, when you say the Old Covenant, are you referring to the Old Testament? Can God now flood the entire earth again because that was part of the Old Covenant? Or are you referring to maybe the Mosaic Covenant? And I think that a lot of people refer to, think that this means the Mosaic Covenant. Okay, if we're going to talk about the Mosaic Covenant, then does that mean that, that, you know, and I asked basically, well, you know, what do you mean by... And they said, oh, this person said, well, you know, the, the Sabbath wasn't reinstated in the New Testament. Well, neither was bestiality. Neither was cross-dressing. Okay, so you can't just take a blanket term like the Mosaic Covenant is done away with. Like, that's a shadow. Because there's plenty of things, in the, and the response that's going to come is, oh, well, the uh, ceremonial laws are what have been done away with. So then, okay, now let's stop. So the Old Covenant is not the Mosaic Covenant. The, most, the Old Covenant is just the ceremonial aspects of the Mosaic Covenant. Is that correct? And if you look at my father's work on this, he goes through multiple, multiple commandments that show that many of the things that people say are ceremonial commandments are actually in the category of moral. The Sabbath is a perfect example of this. The Sabbath brings the death penalty. Death penalty is reserved for moral law not for ceremonial law, right? And everyone else in well, the chat. Well, obviously the moral and ceremonial are are different. I mean, you could say, because someone could say there's death penalty for breaking ceremonial law. If if, if a Israelite who's not a priest or a Levite tries to run, do a run on the, on the, the courtyard or into the holy place, they're going to spear you down. They're not going to, sure. they're not going to, um, or sword you down. You're dead. You're done. And this brings up a You're, great. This grip brings up a great uh, and even no better trial. Point. Yeah, this brings up an even <laughs> even better point, which is, aren't any isn't any transgression against God's law moral transgression? Right. Right. So so technically speaking, and by the way, I've asked a lot of scholars this, and this is when I was interviewing scholars back when we had Torah Resource Radio. I asked every scholar at the beginning. Do you believe, and I had like five questions I asked every scholar just to kind of see where they were on different topics. And one of the questions that I'd ask is, do you think that the Torah can be broken up into civil, ceremonial, and moral? Almost all of them. I think nine out of ten said no, those, those categories don't work. Now, why there are later categories we're trying to impose on yeah, exactly. the text. And yeah. so when you get people like Jeff Durbin or other people who have said, you know, they basically, the guys over at Apologia Radio, openly said, oh, well, as soon as he said that uh, there, there's no such thing as moral, ceremonial, and civil laws, I turned it off. In other words, these guys aren't even willing to listen to the argument. That just shows that a lot of Christians are not willing to actually look at the Torah. The Bible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> are um, we text-based or not? Are we, are, you know, <laughs> Yeshua sent yeah, exactly. his, he trained his disciples, they wrote the Gospels, in the epistles, he, the book of Revelation, it says that is it a special gift, right? That God gave, you know, and so, and it says, blessed if you read and hear, right? It's, we're supposed to be readers and we're supposed to take the text very, very, that it's very special, that it's sacred. And it, and we have to give it caring attention and, and, and realize that it's, it's other, it's different than our normal thinking, you know, and, and people, so they'll read one verse and they want to run and fill in the blanks with their imagination. And scripture doesn't let us do that. If we're, if we're, if we have a concept of Canon of the sacred text, we have to take every thought captive to Messiah. We have to bring every thought of an interpretation and we have to compare scripture with scripture. We have to, we have to be immersed in the word of God that he right. gave us, uh, it's for our good, you know, it's for our development, it's for our instruction in righteousness, right? And the workmen of God be fully equipped as we read in, in Paul. So, but these days, you know, it's easier to watch a movie about the Bible. It's easier to watch, you know, someone called and told me they were excited, you know, Mel Gibson's producing a, a, a part two to the passion. And I'm like, okay, you know, and the passion brought in a million or a billion dollars. And it's like, okay, 
and I, I'll go, I'll see it, you know, but I'll tell you what, it's not the text. Right. But ultimately, what I want to say to people is if you're going to use the term old covenant, you need to be very specific with me about what you're going to say, what you're talking about. Or I'm going to stop and have this conversation again about the fact that people cannot use this term old covenant unless you actually uh, define your term, define the term of what the old covenant is. Now, this person just said it was the Mosaic covenant. So I suppose that they believe that uh, cross dressing is totally fine. Bestiality is totally fine. Um, you know, all sorts of stuff. And, and, and also, I, I do want to say this. He says, the Passover was part of the shadowy, typological administration of the Old Covenant. Well, so is marriage. Marriage is a shadow of what Christ is get, of Christ's relationship with the church. So I assume that this person now is, doesn't believe that marriage is, is good because that is a shadowy uh, representation of something that has been fulfilled in the cross, right? The idea that we don't that we don't uh, do things that point to something else is absolutely ridiculous. It, it, nowhere in Scripture does it say that you're not supposed to uh, do things that point to something else. This is a completely mad argument. Anyway, okay. Uh, Thank you so much for watching this video. Tell us your thoughts on this subject by leaving a comment in the comment section. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and enable those notifications. And we'll see you in the next video.